kuna wazi hizi tulikuwa tumepitisha chini mapato zingine tumepitisha kwa mamba, kwa nyumba tu karibu na mabati na hiyo ni danger lakini ukifika wakati sahihi uko chini kuna familia hapo nyumba ndio ina kudai watoto wanataka kwenda shule na unaona hiyo ndio inaweza kutolea kuliko kwenda kunyonga watu hawa duka experience tuko na ni kazi tu tunakosa the dangers for people living in that area um, are much more pronounced than for many other Kenyans. Illegal connections, being illegal as they are, will never be safe. Ni vigumu makarao kupata watu. Namba 2. Makarao pia wanakulia. One thing that anybody who understands the governance of the informal settlements is that there are people who really benefit from um, you know this level of inequality and uh, this level of deprivation. Um, and those people are the slum lords. Kenya has a population of over 47 million people. Depending on the city, approximately 6 out of 10 residents live in the informal settlements. Nairobi, Kenya's capital city with an estimated population of over 4 million, is home to two of Africa's largest slums. Located about six kilometers from Nairobi's central business district, Kibera is a vibrant but densely populated neighborhood. It is one of the many informal settlements in the city and the country, but it's also the biggest slum in Africa. You look at the informal settlement and say, this is a failure public policy. Because if you had functional urban planning, policies around human settlements and the development of, of spaces where people live, you would not have the, the slums at the level and squalor that you have today. Characterized by limited or lack of access to basic necessities, the grim reality of the people living in these poor urban neighborhoods is evident at first sight. Uko kuna hizo wakembera. Uko na uko magweta kati ya laini yeno. Di kana neno laini neno weta kwa laini saba. Uko tu weta akaro. Over the years, Kenya's urban population has increased considerably, but so has the gap between supply and demand of essential urban services. You know, the thing about this is that actually it's not just affecting poor people, but it's also affecting, you know, working people and middle class people. Um, an area like Kilimani, for example, can go without water for three or four days. And then we discover that actually it wasn't rationally. It was just that somebody went around and switched off all the taps um, in order the, um, uh, the pipes in order to um, allow for um, private bowsers to service um, this community. For the last 25 years, we have not developed the water sources. The water we use here was supposed to be used for the town, in this town, up to the year 2000. So from 2000, the population growth plus the urban migration, plus the industries which have come up, we don't have their water. That's why we reason, we reason the water. The impact of urbanization and overpopulation is being felt across the city, but those living in the overcrowded slums have long endured it. Sasa kama hii vyenye imekaa hivi zimeraruka. 
Maji kisha ikiigi hapa si ni uchafu. So long as you keep a certain segment of the population poor, desperate, struggling, where they think that things like water, sanitation, electricity, access, even in terms of just physical roads and grids and how you get in and out, none, where you keep them realizing or feeling that they're so on the fringe of society that these things are not even um, a basic services that they should aspire to, then you keep them poor, desperate, and willing to do anything to access that drop of water or that electricity that they so desperately need to do what they need to do on a daily basis. This exemplified neglect of the informal settlements has a history entrenched in colonial systems dating back to when Africans could only live in Nairobi as registered workers. It was until 1963 when Kenya gained high independence that Africans were granted the right to live anywhere in the country. But by then, People had already been flocking to the city in thousands, looking for jobs and other opportunities, giving rise to the growth of these distinct, but almost certainly forgotten settlements. You know, urban safety, urban public safety is, is critical now. Um, in many ways, um, you know, where you have, for example, either pipelines, um, you know, oil pipelines, or you have electricity uh, pylons, or you have um, very large uh, drains, um, the dangers for people living in that area um, are much more pronounced than for many other Kenyans. From a distance, these urban ghettos don't tell much of a story, but Take a closer look within and around these valleys of mud-packed structures and corrugated iron and everything will slowly come to perspective. Most if not all these electricity and water connections running through the overlapping houses and cramped alleyways are illegally connected. <laughs> For three years, a group of daring Kenyans secretly recorded on camera footage of illegal power and water businesses and networks in Kibera and Madare informal settlements. A investigation revealed what seems to be a lucrative trade often run by individuals or groups of people. Cartels. <laughs> The nature of the business requires a certain level of skill set. But its success relies heavily on trust and the right connections. So, so, at this point, we are seeing that we are one out of the power. Uh, Imagine, we are going to test him and take him out. Out of the circle. You are going to get your gas. I am going to get my 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 gas.
hii mtaa imejaa cartels and that's why unaona maji the rationing of water iko high because sasa cartels wanataka wauze maji na ile maji ya kukuja direct ya kufikia mwananchi inakuwa sasa ndio inawekwa like a boundary in these crime ridden neighborhoods the supply of illegal services is an opportunity but money is the end goal stima police anachukua pesa utanauza bangi police anachukua pesa changa police anachukua pesa na kadhalika Cartels, service providers and police officers are in on it. That 23 senior officials of the company were fired over a multi-million shilling scandal in Kenya. These kind of stories are not unusual. The players might change, but the game is still the same. In 2016 and 2017, African Censored produced two harrowing investigative documentaries. Kanjo Kingdom, an appalling expose into an extortion ring run by officers from Nairobi County's notorious inspectorate department. Our other report, Inspector Fisi, targeted Nairobi's rogue traffic police officers, demanding and collecting bribes amounting to almost half a billion shillings per month from the public transport crews. <laughs> This time, our prime focus is informal governance. We look into the gaps in governance that have allowed these informal structures not only to exist, but also to thrive. The corruption and the lack of um, you know the, the the impunity that we have in the in these areas um, are really the cause of how they are maintained. We just don't have a pro poor strategy for making sure that um, people's dignity and their quality of life is raised at a cost that they can afford. As we dig further into this illegality, it becomes more apparent that its existence is not just by chance. It's almost by design. There's a whole infrastructure within these informal settlements to try and survive, but it is because the government has failed, has failed this segment of the population. So you can never see the provision of safe, reliable electricity or safe, reliable water. Unaishi ukiwa na uoga all the time. Nikiongea nitakutwa. Sasa hata mtu mzuri unaona kitu mbaya inafanyika. Lakini ile uoga uko nayo, uwezo ongelea. Um, life choices in the urban ghettos is not uh, very easy. I mean, it's not, I mean, you always have choices, but the choices are not the, the same kind of choices as uh, people in middle class societies are. So there are certain rules, there are certain ways of doing things, there are certain cause effects, uh, cause and effects that happen, um, and it's not informal to them, it is very real. It's said that for every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. In the slums, that story writes itself daily. These unauthorized connections might be a source of income for some. But to others, it's a constant reminder of a loss that they can never recover. What we want to life for Baba Kufa, no wheat. What do you man? Pako kika wana fikirianga. Inge kuwa stima baba peto inge kuwa. Inge kuwa moto kuchomea kwa inyo baba peto inge kuwa. Kitu ina kujata sisi lala. Ata sinigika peke angu. Wanda wasa sana. Asa itapiti nini kana wenzangu. Ndunzi wasa sana. Lakini kaa peke angu na wasa sana. 
Kenyans will have to dig deeper in their pockets to cater for an increase in the cost of electricity. It is an entire network of, of murky, corrupt dealings that finally Wanjiko has to bear the brunt of. And we see that in terms of our electricity bills. And yet electricity is really the most basic requirement for a country to industrialize, for people to be able to conduct their businesses and live their lives with a level of, 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 of dignity. It's a world where governance and systematic GURPS have created opportunities for the corrupt to prosper while leaving the poor to pay the most for the least. Hiyo machine ilikuwa hapa mawe ilikuwa hapa. Ikamugonga ikamuruza hapa kwa ma? Kwa maji. Si unaona sasa hapa hivu vya nyazima yako. Si unaona stima. Kwa nini kifo isipatikane tena hapo? In the next episode, we dive into a reality that more or less evens the gap between the haves and the have-nots. Nilipata hapa kama amerara. Alichukuluwa na wasa mauli ya mema. Wakampeleka wakipere fikiria haja kufa, wakimpeleka wazibitari, lakini ya likuwa hamekufa tu. Hi, my name is Joy Kirigia. I am a producer and reporter at Africa Uncensored. Thank you for watching this video to this point and for being our number one supporter. We value you. To maintain our independence and continue to bring you in-depth stories, we need your financial support. We are requesting that you become a member of our channel or a Patreon on Patreon right now. The link with the instructions is on the screen and the description below. Alternatively, you can send us an M-Pesa directly using the instructions below. Thank you.